Hey everyone, this is Rocky from WeLearnChess.com, and in this video we're going to look at a classic endgame puzzle. Uh, I first saw this puzzle when a FIDE master showed it to me at a local library a couple years ago, uh, and then uh, just tonight I was going through this little endgame trainer that I got uh, a few years ago actually, and I haven't really used it much, uh, and I saw the same puzzle and it reminded me of it. Uh, so I wanted to share it with you. It's a classic puzzle. I know it's definitely in some different chess books, so you may have seen it. Um, but you might want to refresh your memory, or uh, of course if you haven't seen it, then it should be pretty cool. Uh, so it's white to move in this position, and it looks like white is totally toast, because this black pawn is going to queen, and the white king is nowhere near close enough to stopping it. And it also looks like the white pawn, the white's only hope, uh, is going to be easily gobbled up by the black king. So it looks impossible here to save a draw, but there is actually one sequence of moves that will uh, help white achieve a draw, and it's a draw by force. So if you want to um, put your video on pause and try to think this through, go ahead. Um, you'll want to try to explain why um, the one sequence of king moves saves the day, whereas other moves fail. Okay, so I'm going to go over the solution now. Um, the first move is force. There's only one move here for white that can save the day, and that is king g7, which is the correct start. Let's quickly look at why the other moves don't work. So there's two other king moves. Well, pushing the pawn doesn't work because the black king just easily gobbles it up, and this king is, and this pawn over here is. Uh, too close to queening, so something like this, and white is still not in the square and can't catch it. Pawn rounds. Okay, so um, so pushing the pawn doesn't work. Moving the king down here also doesn't work because we're kind of in a similar situation where the king can't catch the pawn, and if he tries to change track now, come over to rescue this pawn, he's too far away. And now there's nothing he can do. The pawn's gone, and he's too far away uh, from queening. And if he tries to go after this pawn here, then again, he's too far away. And if he tries to push this pawn, it gets gobbled up, and this pawn's going to queen. So uh, the king can't go here because it's too far away from this pawn. So if the king tries to go over this way to get closer to this pawn, Again, black has two options. He can start by pushing the pawn, or he can play king b6 right away. And again, this king is just too far away from this pawn, and also is too far away from catching the black pawn. So neither one of these light squares is going to work. And so the king has to come out here to g7 to have any chance. And the, the point is, he's getting a little bit closer to trying to catch this pawn, and he's a little bit closer to trying to... Um, protect this pawn. So if he can get over here and protect this pawn um, and both sides can queen, then we'll have a queen versus queen ending where um, it should just be a draw in all cases because there's not really any skewers um, where one side would be able to pick up the other side's queen. Okay, so the king's a little bit closer here. Uh, black has two moves. He can push this pawn or he can try to get closer to this pawn. He doesn't quite have to play uh, king b6 yet because the white king is still so far away, so probably pushing makes sense. Uh, and again, white has to be careful here. Um, there's only actually one move that, that'll do it. If he tries to go this way and get a little bit closer to this pawn, after king b6, this pawn's gone, and again, he's too far away. Uh, and again, if he tries to go this way and go after this pawn, then he can't catch it, and he can't come back in time. So this is lost, of course. So again, he has to keep coming out on the same diagonal. It's amazing how, um, whoops, it's amazing how just this little difference in the squares makes. So again, just a little bit closer to this pawn and a little bit closer to this pawn. This move, king f6, actually forces black's hand. If black continues to try to push this pawn here, it's immediately a draw because white gets over to this pawn just in time. And now both sides will queen. Black does queen first, but it's not with check. White queens, and there's no real, you can play around with this if you want, but there's no real way to um, to pick up white's queen. Um, white will always have squares to go to, and it's just a draw by perpetual or 50 moves if you're playing against a Lagos on ICC or something. Um, so, okay. 
So um, we see that black can't push this pawn, so that means he does have to play king v6 to get a little closer to this pawn and try to protect it, or try to gobble it up before white can get over to this critical square. Okay, but um, now um, uh, black has used to move, so this pawn didn't move. And now white can continue out on this diagonal. It looks really funny that the king has just come straight out, but it was the fastest way to the middle of the board. And now um, white is in position, amazingly. He's one move away from protecting his pawn, and he's also one move away from getting into the critical square to be able to catch this pawn. So black has two options here. He can take this pawn, but then white gets into the square and the pawn is caught. Draw. Or he can try to push this pawn, but then again, white gets this just in time to protect this pawn. And now both sides queen, as we saw. But we have this queen versus queen ending, which will end up in a draw as well. So white has actually succeeded by getting to the e5 square in protecting or getting close enough to the two critical points on the board. I guess technically there's three because he can get into the square this way. But getting into this critical spot here where he's able to save the draw. So he was amazingly able to get all the way from A1 out to here just in time to complicate matters for black and secure the draw. I just thought it was amazing because really in this starting position it looks absolutely just utterly hopeless. And uh, when I first had looked at the puzzle, I, I did find the first move just because it felt like the most natural move. Because a lot of times moving your king diagonally is going to help cover you cover more ground and give you more options of which squares you can go to next as opposed to trying to just go by one square at a time laterally. So um, different positions call for different king movements but usually um, moving diagonally is going gonna, is gonna to help you cover more ground. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that puzzle and I'll see you around for the next video.